Hello and welcome to the English Language Paper 2 portion of our course. Now, before we get into the exam question practice and what to anticipate when it comes to practicing for these exams, I thought it would be really useful to first start off by giving you an overview of what to anticipate in terms of the entire paper and what to anticipate from all five questions. Do bear in mind that even if this exam is one hour 45 minutes, this time can fly by really quickly if you don't plan and you don't anticipate what to expect in each portion of the paper. So what I thought would be useful is to create a mind map where I go over all questions in some depth so that you can know what to anticipate for this exam. So let's get started and we'll start with question one. So for this paper you always have two extracts that you're going to be expected to write about. Of course source A is always a non-fiction modern extract and source B which is the second one is always a Victorian extract written in the 1800s. Now for question one, you're only asked to look at source A, which is the modern question, or rather the modern extract, and you tend to just get four state you get a range of statements, and you're only expected to pick out four statements which are true. Now the catch for this question is that they tend to be very similarly worded and you're also asked to look usually at a specific part of the source and you select what you think is correct. So do make sure that you don't, in a rush to get through this question, you don't pick out something that seems very worded in a way that is quite similar to another statement and make sure that of course you pay attention to what are the statements saying. Now the great thing about this question is that you don't have to write anything, you just literally shade in four options. And for this question, I would suggest you spend five minutes max and it's worth four marks. Now for question two, you have to compare both sources A and B. Now for this question, you tend to be asked either to talk about similarities or differences or both. But usually the questions, and you're gonna see this for the past papers that we're gonna look at, they tend to either ask either for similarities or differences. Now for this question, I would suggest of course, always adding two pieces of evidence within each paragraph. In other words, you are comparing both source A and source B in each specific paragraph. And I would suggest that you obviously link it back to the questions and write a maximum of two or three paragraphs answering the question, no more than that. So for example, if you write two paragraphs, that therefore means you are writing four pieces of evidence because in paragraph one, you find a piece of evidence from source A and source B uh, explaining something related to the question, whether it's a similarity or a difference. And then of course, in the second paragraph, you find an evidence from source A and source B. And of course, make sure you are using the PEE method. And in the course, I do explain the PEE method in detail, where I go over also the introduction to so make sure you check out that video as well. Now for this question, you should spend a maximum of 10 minutes and it's worth eight marks. And always make sure you link it back to the question. Now let's move on to question three. And now this question tends to ask you, as opposed to obviously question one, it asks you to focus only on source B, which is the Victorian extract. Now for this question, you tend to be asked to explain the effects of a particular a choice of language. So this is now where you choose the examples and you are expected to refer to things like nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, similes, and so on. And make sure you check out my terminology video where I go over all the relevant terminology and explain all of that and what to anticipate. Now, when it comes to this question, you should write a maximum of three or four paragraphs. And again, this question, you're not comparing two sources. So you're finding, for instance, three different pieces of evidence and then you include that in each paragraph using the PEE method. And always obviously link it back to the question. I would suggest in terms of timing for this question, given the question is worth 12 marks, you should spend 13 minutes in total and then move on. So now let's look at question four. Now this question, you are expected to compare both sources. Now this question is a large question and you're either asked to look at the whole of source A and source B or you're asked to look at specific sections either of source A and source B or both and of course you are then expected to discuss attitudes and perspectives of both writers. You are expected to compare both extracts consistently throughout the entire essay. Now, for this question, I would suggest, of course, you have to include two pieces of evidence per paragraph, and you're supposed to describe the effects 
you should always start off with an introduction to introduce your question and to link it back to the statement and and of course link it back to the sources and then you develop at least four or five paragraphs now my suggestion is four paragraphs and do remember that within each paragraph so you're adding two pieces of evidence meaning in total if you did four overall PEE paragraphs you are including two four six eight quotations of course if you had time and you did five paragraphs that would even be better now you then end off with a conclusion and have a mix of language points this is of course things like nouns verbs adjectives adverbs similes uh, metaphors and all that but also structure points and this relates to for example how does the extract and both extracts how do they begin versus how they end um, or sentence types punctuation that kind of thing and of course do make sure you check out the terminology video where I'll go over that and explain that in detail now for this question Given it's worth 16 marks, I would suggest spending 17 minutes and then moving on. Now, the final fifth question is worth half of the marks of the entire paper. So you do need to allocate a lot of time to this question. And of course, this is question five. Now, in question five, you get to write a question or rather you get to write an article. So it's either, for instance, a newspaper article or a website, usually a blog or a letter, a speech very rarely you get a diary entry but that's very rare you tend to either be asked to write either a newspaper website letter or a speech and you tend to get a statement that you have to respond to and show to what extent do you agree and you formulate an argument now let's go over each of these now let's start off with a newspaper or a website now the reason why i put them together in terms of the layout and how you put them together in your answer they are very similar layout in fact i would say the same layout because both of them should always have a headline they should att attract the attention of your readers so for example if you think about blog it's very similar in terms of your audience and in terms of captivating people to come to your website as opposed to other websites same thing for newspapers headlines are really meant to be captivating um, and to attract that newspaper someone to buy that specific newspaper over other newspapers so always remember you have a headline I would say write that in capital letters to make it stand out then you should always have subheadings so as you're developing your points you have subheadings to break up the text to make it easier for your reader now when it comes to letter how you lay out a letter in the top right hand corner you should always have the name and the address of your recipient in other words the letter to whom the per or rather the person to whom this letter is addressed to you always begin that in the top right section of the paper then after you've written that in the top right section you then in the um you skip a line and then on the left hand side you then add your details you can make up a name you can make up an alias you can write as john smith then you can make up an address it doesn't have to be your own specific address but do remember in terms of a layout you have on the top right hand corner the name and address of the person that's receiving the letter then you skip a line and then in the left hand corner your own address then you move on and you write the date underneath your address and then you begin with dear whoever you're writing to and then you always end off with kind regards yours sincerely depending on the person you're writing to so for example if this is a letter to an mp always written in a very formal way with your first name and surname and kind regards however if this is a letter for example to your parents you can end with yours truly or um look forward to hearing from you that kind of thing in terms of a speech how to write a speech is always begin depending on your audience now for example you might have a speech which is addressed to parents always begin with ladies and gentlemen or if it's a speech addressed to other students you begin with fellow students or if it's a speech for instance addressed to your headmaster or a member of parliament or that kind of thing begin with um madam the name and surname of the headmistress or whatever um or sir whoever um if it's an mp it would be um mp whoever you know mp john smith now then you then develop it and so on the speech and then you end by thanking your audience your final sentence should always be thank you so much for listening to my speech i hope you learned something new now in terms of a diary and this is the one which i would say in terms of your practice and your efforts don't allocate too much time in practicing diary entries because they're not very popular however of course it's important to be familiar with this now a diary entry you begin with dear diary because usually diary entries are personally addressed they're very in terms of the formality they're fairly informal in terms of your writing down your thoughts and you're addressing it to yourself and of course your diary now you then develop it and you end with yours or much love and it's fairly simple in terms of diary entries now in terms of 
all of them because you remember the question is always a statement it's always something that you have to argue against so for example uh, the statement could be climate change is not important I don't understand the big deal that kind of thing and of course you then you could either you decide which point you want to argue for or against so for instance I would disagree and I would say climate change is important I th you then should think of now thinking about the content of any of this in relation to that question you then think of three points so you can write three paragraphs explaining your point of view so i think climate change is important for the first reason second reason third reason you think also uh because obviously you want to show that your argument is compelling think about including statistics think about including for instance um anecdotes so um you know short examples short stories of other people who are relatable now when you've written your three paragraphs explaining your view and arguing for your perspective, you then consider and you have to consider counter arguments. And I would say, think of two counter arguments. So going back to my original example of climate change, I would then think, okay, there's some people who would disagree with me and think climate change is not important because of reason number one and reason number two. You give those reasons. However, in your final concluding paragraph, you still cut down those arguments and you say why, in spite of considering these counter arguments, you think your viewpoint is important. And then, of course, make sure in terms of this question, because it's a fairly large question, and of course, it's worth half of the marks in the paper, allocate sufficient time to planning. So I would suggest spend 10 minutes planning and then 50 minutes writing because it's worth 40 marks. So that's that when it comes to what to anticipate for the English language paper two. And do make sure you come back where I will walk you through all the different exam questions and how to practice and how to write this out. So thank you so much for listening.